Hello everyone, welcome to Chorus Camp. We are at 22nd day of June Leco Challenge and the problem we are going to cover in this video is number of matching for sequence. So the input given here is a string yes and array of string words and we have to return the number of subsequence that match between the string yes and the words given in the array. So let's understand this problem with an example. So here is the given example in the problem statement. We have to find whether the words are subsequences or not. Here subsequences are nothing but the characters in the words given in the words array must match the characters in yes without changing its relative order. For example, the word yes is A, B, C, D, E and the first word given here is A. So it is actually a character which is present in the word. So it is the subsequence. So we are adding our result to 1. So now moving to second word B, B, we don't have any two Bs in the given string. We have one B, but we don't have another B. So this cannot be a subsequence of our given string S. Yes. Moving to our next word A, C, D. So the first character in word S is A and the third character is C and the fourth character is D. So if you delete B and E, the word actually becomes A, C, D. So this is again a subsequence of the given word S. Yes. So we are adding plus 1. Moving to next word which is ACE. ACE is again a subsequence because we have A, C, E in order in given S. So if you delete B and D from the given S, you will get the word ACE. So again it is a subsequence. So overall we have three subsequences that match our word yes. So that is going to be our output. So how are we going to approach this? The simple brute force approach is going to be iterating the given words in the given array and pass both words yes and the iterated word w to a method is subsequence. So this method is going to determine whether this word is a subsequence of this word and return true or false. So based on the result we are going to increment our count and return our result. So let's see how this is subsequence method is going to work before getting into the optimal solution because we are going to use the same method again in the second approach as well. So this method is going to take two words and iterate through the words to check whether the characters match or not. So for example, our S is going to be A, B, C, D, E and let's take the third example A, C, D for comparison. So it is going to be A, C, D. So we are going to have two pointers starting at the each word. So let us have our first pointer i starting at our s and j starting at our word w. So now it compares until the characters meet. If not, it, it is going to iterate only i because the length of the word s is actually going to be greater or equal to the word we compare. If the length of the word s itself is less, then in that case it cannot, the word w cannot be a subsequence of S. So let's start iterating this word. So first characters A and A matches. So this can be a subsequence of the word S. So let's move our I to the next variable. So now I is placed at B and J is going to be at C because our first characters matched. So it's time to compare the next characters. Since B and C are not matching, we are going to iterate only I. So I moves to C. So C and C now matches. So in that case, time to iterate both the characters or both the pointers. So now i and j move to the next character where d and d matched. So it's time to move i to the next character and j as well to the next character. But we don't have any other characters left and j reached the last characters character of the word w. So in that case, it actually means it has iterated all the words in word w and the characters in word w are in sequence and present in the word yes. So it is actually a subsequence of word yes. So in that case it is going to return true. So this is how our subsequence method is going to work. And if you try to work on the same way by iterating all the words and finding whether they are subsequence or not, it is going to work in we go of n cube into l where l is the length of average length of the words given. So this is definitely going to time limit exceed. So we are going to make few changes to the brute force solution itself to make our solution work in an optimal way. 
before going to the main function, let's first, first filter the subsequence function itself. Instead of iterating the whole word, we are going to get the help of string dot index of method to shorten the search process of this words. The function of index of method is going to be if the characters match in both the words, then it is going to return the index of the word. If not, it is going to return minus one. So if a character is not there at all, then in that case, we don't have to iterate the rest of the words. For example, if the words array is having a word SS, in that case, if we are checking the first character itself is not there in the word A, B, C, D, E. So we don't have to really iterate the rest of the word because our index of function when comparing the first character S itself will return minus one. So if not, it is going to return some value, which is nothing but the index of the word. So how are we going to handle that is we are going to have a variable which hold the index of the last search character. So for example, in ACD, it is going to hold the uh, index of A as we are going to search for the A and A. So it is going to return zero. So we are going to search the index for C in the word yes, starting from the index zero. So now we are going to search for C after the index zero from in word yes. So the index is going to be 0, 1, 2. So now the index variable is going to hold the value 2. So we are going to search for D after the index 2 because there can be a word A, D, C. So in that case, if we check index of A and index of C, it is not going to return minus 1. So if we search for D, it is going to, it is again not going to return minus 1 because D is also present, but this is not the correct order. So in order to overcome that, we are going to search for that character's index after the last searched index. So that if all the character's index are found, then in that case, it is a subsequence. If not, if it returns minus one at any point, then it is not a subsequence. So this is how we are going to work with our is subsequence method. Additionally, we are going to maintain two sets. One is subsequence and other one is not subsequence. So our subsequence set is going to hold the words which we already found is a subsequence of the given word yes. And not subsequence is going to hold the words which is not subsequence of the given word. So whenever we come across the word again, we don't have to really go through this function. Instead, we directly skip the iteration or increment our count based on the value already present in the set. So this is it. This is overall going to work in big O of yen square into yell time as we are going to iterate the given words once and we are going to pass on to the is subsequence function and that is going to take yell time that is going to iterate each word every time and the index of function is going to take big O of yen time complexity. So yes, hope you're understanding this logic. Let's go to the code now. So yes, as I said, we are going to have two sets, subs and not subs. They are going to hold the subsequence and not subsequence words. So now let's iterate our given words in words array. And first we are going to check if the iterated word is already present in the set or not. If it is already present, then we are going to increment our count. Else, we are going to check if it is in the non sub. Then we are going to skip this loop itself because it is already known that it is not a subsequence. So it there is no use of checking it or iterating it. Else, if it is not present in both of the sets, then we are going to pass it on to is subsequence method. If it is a subsequence, then we are going to increment our count and add it to our set. Else if it is not a subsequence, we are not going to do anything to our count. Instead, just we are going to add it to the non-subsequence set. So yes, this is it. Let's spend some time in writing our is subsequence method. So 
yes, this is the step I said. We are going to search for that particular character's index from the previous index of the character. So if the index is equal to minus 1, then in that case, we are straight away going to return false. If not, we are going to increment our index for the next character's search process. And finally, if it did not return false at all, then we are going to return true. So yes, this is it. Let's run and try. Yes, the solution is accepted and runs in 30 milliseconds, which is a 98% faster solution out of all the solutions submitted. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe and let me know in comments. Thank you.